high again. So in this lecture, we gonna see the 1.5 volt and 1.8 volt circuit. You will find always in any circuit a control IC as you can see. Here we have the control IC. Its reference in the motherboard is U9. And we have here its part number or model TPS 51124. So this IC basically controls two channels. So this channel, as you can see, the 1.5 volt channel and 1.8 volt channel as you can see and as we have seen before this is basically standard between all channels so every channel you will find mosfets two mosfet usually two mosfets okay inductor so the purpose of induction in every channel is to increase the current okay we can see also that inductor also has as a purpose to filter the currents but the main purpose is to increase the current, okay? And here we have two filtering capacitors. One chemical capacitor here with capacity of 220 microfarad and 2.5 volt. Do you see the voltage here is low because this capacitor basically are not supposed to pass 2.5 volt, as you can see. We, we want to get here just 1.5 volt, as you can see. Okay, and the other capacitor, this is basically a ceramic capacitor, C71. Okay, here basically we have open, means this capacity will not be connected in the motherboard. Okay, and of course we have the input voltage here, plus V part 19 volts, that will be passed through these two ceramic capacitors in order to remove and to eliminate the noise in the circuit and then will pass through these MOSFETs. Of course, these MOSFETs are controlled by this IC. This is the control IC. As you can see here, we have the gate here is connected directly to this IC. As you can see, we have the drive high for this MOSFET, and for this one, we have the drive low. Okay? So the same working principle for the other channel. As you can see, we have 1.8 for 1.8 volt channel. As you can see, where we have the input signal plus V, but always 19 volt. Two capacitors, filtering capacitors, two MOSFETs. As you can see here, so always the signal MOSFET is connected to the ground, and we have here inductor L6. Okay, and we have two capacitors. So one chemical capacitor and the other is ceramic capacitor, but also this one is not connected in the motherboard. We have here open. When you find open in the schematic means you will not find this kind of capacitor. Let me show you on the motherboard open means what? So as you can see here, we have here C71 basically. This is the capacity basically here capacitor should be connected here but it's not connected by default that's why we have here up so 1.8 volt basically is for the ram this is the working power for ddr2 ram okay the working power for ddr2 ram is 1.8 volt and 0.9 volt for vtt or for terminals okay and this voltage over here as you can see 1.5 volt is basically for chipsets, especially the North Bridge. Okay, the second circuit for the RAM random access memory. So, as you know, the RAM basically has two voltages a main voltage and a voltage for terminals VTT. Okay, so because here in the schematic, the type of the RAM is DDR2, so the main voltage will be 1.8 volts and the second voltage or the voltage for terminal terminals will be the half of the main voltage means 0.9 volts so 0.9 volt or the VTT is generated based on the main voltage. So as you can see here in the circuit, we have here the main voltage 1.8 volt and over here we get 0.9 volt, the half of this power. So this is a VTT voltage. 
So this circuit is the circuit that generates this voltage. So it takes here this voltage, as you can see, as you can see here, we have the in input voltage here. So it takes voltage here and then it generates, as you can see here, the VTT. As you can see, we get here VTT. But of course, after receiving many input signals or enable signals. So here, as you can see, we have the ground. In pin 11, the IC is connected to the ground here. Here we have the V in the working voltage for the IC. So the IC itself needs a working voltage in order to work and generate 0 0.9 volt. So the V in for the IC is plus 5 volt, as you can see. Okay. And then we have this voltage that will be used by the IC in order to generate VTT, as you can see, 0 0.9 volt. And we have other signals like S3, S5 signal. We have here VTT reference and so on. So basically here we have some ceramic capacitors, as you can see. So here we have the voltage. We don't have here inductor because this is just a small voltage. We have just some ceramic capacitors as you can see in order to remove or to eliminate the noise so these ceramic capacitors are connected to the ground as you can see here and of course we don't have here the v bat 19 volt we have just here 1.8 volt and 5 volts okay so we have seen that this ic the tp is 51 124 u9 this IC, as you can see, we have here U9, generate 1.8 volt and 1.8 volt. So 1.8 volt for the DDR RAM and 1.8 volt for chipsets in the motherboard. So this 1.8 volt will go directly to this IC, U10, as you can see, in order to generate 0 0.9 volt VTT for the RAM. So 1.9 volt IC, this IC will generate 1.8 volt for the RAM. This 1.8 volt will be directly applied to this circuit, as you can see, U10. Here we have 1.8 volt. So this 1.8 volt will be 0.9 volt VTT power supply for RAM terminals. Okay, so of course, so we're gonna see this component in the motherboard. So the IC, remember, we have U9 IC. We have two MOSFETs for this channel. We have Q19 and Q1033. And we have L5 inductor. And we have two capacitors, one electrolytic capacitor and another serum capacitor for filtering purposes. And then we will get 1.5 volt. And in the other in the other side we have another channel, 1.8 volt channel where we have two MOSFETs Q21 and Q1032, and we have L6 inductor to increase the current, and we have two capacitors, one chemical or electrolytic capacitor C1088 with the capacity of 220 microfarad and 2.5 volt and ceramic capacitor but this capacitor is open it's not connected in the motherboard of course we have the pads where we can check whether we get 1.8 volt or not so we're gonna see this components in the motherboard besides of this component also okay u10 as you can see that generate 0 0.9 volt VTT, as you can see, we have a VTT, okay? So, U9. So, over here, we have U9, as you can see, that generate 1.8 volt and 1.5 volt. And we have U10, okay? So, as you can see, these two ICs are next to the RAM slot, as you can see. So these two ICs generate two power supplies for this RAM. Do you see here we have 1.8 volt as you can see 1.8 volt the working voltage for the RAM. This 1.8 volt is basically generated by this IC. 
and also we need 0.9 volt for terminals that is generated for this IC. That's why these two ICs are next to this memory. So in the back of this IC, we're gonna find the MOSFETs. Basically here we have L6, as you can see, and L5, okay? So L6 and L5. So L5 here, as you can see, here we have L5. This is the inductor that exists in the 1.5 volt channel. And over here, we have, as you can see, L6. Here we have L6. To increase the current here for 1.8 volt. So L6 for 1.8 volt and L5 for 1.5 volt. So let's look for the MOSFETs, these two MOSFETs and these two MOSFETs in the back side of the motherboard. So here, as you can see, for this channel, we have Q1032, as you can see, MOSFET, okay, Q1032. Here, basically, we have Q1032, as you can see. I have Q1032, as you can see. And then we have Q, Q21, okay? So here, we have Q21. We have Q21, okay? Next to L6, as you can see. Next to L6 inductor, as you can see. Q21, L6. And here, as you can see, we have Q19 next to L5. So as you can see here, we have Q19 here, and this is L5, as you can see. Okay? Then we have Q1024 in the back side, as you can see. Q1024 in the back side. Q10 or Q1034. Q1034 in the back side. So also for this circuit, basically, the probable component that can cause a failure in the circuit are the IC, the two MOSFETs for each channel, this capacitors here could be shorted to the ground as you can see and those also and of course those also could be shorted to the ground as you can see okay so always if you have a short circuit or a failure in this circuit you should check the IC the MOSFETs this capacitors